Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day. I'm going to ask you all, would you please stand with us? We're going to sing and we're going to praise to our Lord and our King.
a seat real quick. Hey, if you would help us out, if you don't mind the people on your row, could you, uh, center rows, could you scoot to the middle and outside rows, uh, if you could scoot more towards the edge. Uh, we still have more people that are coming in, and we're running out of seats a little bit, so if you would help us out with that, that'd be great and fantastic. Thanks so much. Your row's full. All right. Um, sit on the floor. Let the people come in. Hey, everybody, my name is Kyle Mounty. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are so grateful you decided to join us this morning. Happy Mother's Day, because you can't say it enough. Come on. Hey, let's do this. Let's just, everyone in the room, look at a uh, mother in the room and just say, we love you, Mom. We love you, Moms. Moms online, we love you. Oh, you people are beautiful and fantastic. Hey, if you have those prayer cards, one of our deacons will be around after the next song to pick those up, so we would love to pray with you. Hey, I want to tell you some big things going on at VCC. We're offering this new Bible study called Christianity Explored. It's going to start this Monday and Tuesday and run for the next seven weeks. Both days are identical classes, so you don't have to come to both, but if your schedule changes and you're worried about missing out, just plan on being on the other day. But it's a fantastic study where we're just going to open up the book of Mark, and we're just going to answer some basic questions about the Christian faith. What does it look like? Who's God? Who am I? How can I be accepted? What, why did Jesus have to die? We're going to look at all those things, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And so whether this is your first time in church, whether you're still unsure about this Jesus guy and you want to know more, we're encouraging you to sign up and explore with us because we're going to look and we're going to answer all of your questions. But also, if you're a seasoned believer, if you're faithful, if you're like, I've been through the Gospel of Mark 10 times, let's go through it an 11th time. Because you're going to find out ways and answers to questions that people are asking. And we want to make sure we give you the tools in your belt so that when people are ready to explore, you know how to lead them. And so there are sign-up sheets in the Welcome Center on those orange tables. If you're at all interested, it's Monday and Tuesday nights for the next seven weeks, starting tomorrow. And it's at 6.30 and only going to go for about an hour, an hour and a half. Here's a quick trailer video to show you what it's going to look like. Check out this video. you're going to get excited and and uh, please come explore with us we're all in this journey we're all on this path together uh, and so we're going to start off the service a little differently we're, we're going to go into a time of communion and so in the chair racks in front of you there should be some prepackaged communion down there if you want to go ahead and, and peel off the top layers and, and get the cracker uh, and get the juice ready we're going to partake uh, here's why because all around you in this room this morning, there are people just like you who at one time had no clue what their life was about. And then they explored. And then they sought. And then they found. And what we as believers in this room know and proclaim to be true is we have found the goodness of God. Amen? Come on. And so if you're here and you're just exploring, you belong here. We are so glad you decided to join us. But as believers who have explored, we know that the 
goodness of life only comes from God. And when we take communion, we don't just remember, but we rejoice. We rejoice in the fact that Jesus came and died for us, gave down his life so that we could lay down our lives for the giver of life. So if you have that communion ready, um, we'll take the bread that symbolizes his body that was sacrificed, broken, when you're ready, we'll take the juice that symbolizes his blood that was shed, that covers all of our sins and makes us clean. Father, it's your good grace that causes us to rejoice. And Father, we just praise you. We are so grateful, God, that you make it so easy to find you. God, that all we have to do is call out the name Jesus, to cry out, Abba, Father, and you're there. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us a reason to rejoice. Not because of the blessings we get, but because of who you say we are. God, that we're your children and that you love us. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Hey, we're going to continue worshiping and let's rejoice.
nothing can stand against the power of our God in almighty fortress and you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God and you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our God in almighty fortress and you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God and you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our God of our God so when I fight I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high oh God the battle belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night oh belongs to the Lord.
you guys to think about that too because when you come to accept Jesus as your Lord and the Savior of your life you are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. I pray for anybody in this place that doesn't know Jesus that you will by the end of today.
you please pray with me? Lord God, we are so, so thankful. First of all, just to be in your house. We are thankful to be in your presence. We are thankful for the Holy Spirit. And we are thankful that we get the opportunity, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week, to sing your praises and to just glorify your name, Lord God. We are so, so blessed. We're blessed because of Jesus. Thank you so much for sending your son to die for me. Thank you so much for paying the penalty of my sin and the price that I should have paid. But because of your great mercy and your grace, Jesus paid that penalty for me. I pray for anybody in this place today, Lord God, who doesn't know you, that you would just press it upon them, that you would help them to see their need for a Lord and a Savior of their life. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Ascent, you are dismissed. Just how it goes. Just how it goes. Just how it goes. Just how it goes. She knows everything I do. Yeah, and that's the source of all my you. Yeah, I know everything she'll say. Yeah, she'll say everything's okay. I got a fever I know I receive her Catching everything she throws That's just how it goes 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 who join us every week online. Some live, some follow us later. People all around the world. So this morning, we're going to say hi to a couple in Argentina. So yeah. Graciela and Rafael. Hola. Nice to... We don't see them, but you know, they're out there, right? Awesome. Fantastic. And you know, my mom is watching today. So happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. My mother is uh, 87 years old, and I've got to tell you, she deserves a medal. She raised four very um, rambunctious boys, and she survived. She's still alive. She's still here. Um, I can't tell you how many of her and my dad's cars have been totaled by these boys, right? How many emergency room visits? Actually, uh, my two older brothers were twins. And uh, we all played rugby, and so they, they played rugby, and uh, they had a scrimmage at high school one day, and the coach thought it was a good idea to put them against each other, head to head. Bad idea, right? So my brother Glenn's got the ball, he's running down the sideline, Greg comes in and tackles the snot out of him. Can I say snot in church? Sorry, I don't know. Tackles him really hard, breaks his collarbone, and Glenn breaks his wrist. One tackle, two brothers, one emergency room, one very distraught mommy. We love you. All right, awesome. <laughs> it's so good to see you this morning. I, I'm going to do something a little different this morning for Mother's Day. Um, typically on Mother's Day, people preach Proverbs 31, which describes the perfect woman, right? We are not going to talk about the perfect woman. I know there are a lot of very perfect moms in the air and online, and, and I know, and we love you, and we're so grateful for you. But the truth is that we're not all perfect. And we know it. <laughs> we know it. We know we're not perfect. And so I'm going to talk about a very imperfect woman who made it into the genealogy of Jesus, right? And so that's what we're going to chat about today. All right. So I know that all of us have made some big mistakes. We've, we have some things we regret in our lives, and, and we're just going to address all of that today. So I made a discovery a couple of weeks ago in the book of Matthew. Now, Matthew was, was one of the disciples who walked around with Jesus for three years, and he recorded everything that Jesus did and said, and, and he wrote it all down so that you and I could read it and see it. 
Now, in the book of Matthew, the first, right in the beginning, chapter one, there's this genealogy. And if you don't know what a genealogy is, it's like all of the ancestors of Jesus, right? And there's quite a few of them in the Bible. I got to confess with you, whenever I see one of those, I just skip right over them. They're so boring, normally, okay, normally. But man, I, I made this discovery um, this last a couple of weeks ago and, and discovered, man, there's this treasure that I've been missing all this time. All these years of reading Matthew, I've never seen this before, but it's pretty amazing. So let's, let's just do that. Let's just start reading out. So it starts out like most genealogies, Matthew chapter 1. It goes like this. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. You can see why I skip over it, right? Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah. And then suddenly, he throws us a curveball. Baseball reference, South African guy, right? That's pretty good. You like that, Marty? Baseball reference, curveball. He says his mother was Tamar. So we got this list of 40 fathers, and he decides to throw in a mom there. His mother was Tamar. For some reason, he puts that in there. Normally, it's just dads. And then he goes right back to Perez was the father of Hezron, yada, yada, yada. And on we go. And down in verse 5, He adds, whose mother was Rahab. And then Boaz was the father of Obed. And then again, whose mother was Ruth. And then later on, he mentions a woman named Bathsheba. And then right at the end, Jesus, I mean, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Okay, so all of a sudden, yeah, there's all these women. And this catches my attention. I'm like, why mention five moms in this list of 40 dads? What does he want us to learn about this? What does this say? And I got to tell you, these are not Proverbs 31 women. They were pretty shady at best. All of them had a bit of a reputation, all right? And so, man, I'm like, what's going on here? Then I realized there's actually a a strange thread that runs through the prominent women who were associated with Jesus. Like, what's that all about? Most of their reputations stem from some sort of a sexual scandal of some kind. Really? In the genealogy of Jesus, yeah. So Matthew lists these five women, right? And uh, here's here's who they are. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, and then the mother of Jesus, Mary. Why are they listed? What makes them so valuable that they should be listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Why? What's going on? I think that is exactly what Matthew wanted us to ask. I think that's the point. Okay, so let's take a look at this woman. The first one is Tamar. Tamar, we find this in Matthew 1 verse 3. Have any of you got that family member that nobody will claim? (laughs) They don't get invited to the reunions, the weddings, right? They've done such bad stuff that you're just sad that they have the same last name as you. Anyone have someone like that? Anybody? How many of you are that person? Oh, I see some names go, ha, I got you, okay, I got you. Well, Tamar was that family member. Man, if you haven't read her story, you should go read it. It's in Genesis 38. But here's what she does. Here's how she makes it into the bloodline of Jesus. She dresses up as a prostitute, and she goes and stands next to the side of the road and waits for her father-in-law to come by. I told you they were shady, right? And when he comes by, he looks over and he thinks he sees a prostitute and he makes his way over there and things just go downhill from there, all right? Anyway, it's a pretty messy situation, right? And it's it's not a a perfect story. And so, yes, yes what we know is that this woman ended up being more righteous than Judah, who was her father-in-law, actually did, all right? And he treated her like garbage and there was nothing that she could do about it. And there's no denying this was a horrible mess, a rough story. But she made it into the genealogy of Jesus. All right, second one, Rahab. She didn't need a disguise. That was her job. We all know that. She was also a Gentile. She was not a Jew. She was a resident of Jericho. Jericho was the city where Joshua was getting ready to invade when he entered the promised land. And so here she is, right? So how did Rahab become Jesus' great, 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 great times 24 grandmother? 
How does she end up in this story, in this genealogy of our Lord? What happened, right? Well, here's what she did. She hid some Jewish military spies in her home, and then she helped them escape. So when Joshua arrived to, to take over Jericho, he spared her and her family. So she gets welcomed into Israel, and then she ends up getting married, good for her, to a guy named Salmon. Not the fish, right? But and this results in the appearance of the next woman. And this is Ruth. She's the third woman on our list. Now, she herself personally wasn't embroiled in any sort of sexual scandal, but her people were. Her people. She was a Moabite. She was from Moab. Not Moab, Utah, guys. Okay, we're talking about like the kingdom of Moab. It's directly opposite the Dead Sea to Israel. And this country sprung from incest between Lot and his oldest daughter. Yes, the Bible is full of interesting characters and crazy stories, just like the church is full of interesting characters and crazy stories, right? All right, but Ruth's people, they were pagans. They used to offer human sacrifices to idol gods like Chemosh. So this Ruth, man, she had a rough life. She had lots of personal tragedy, but, but she's famous for her great loyalty, Great, really loyal woman. She wound up in Bethlehem. She married a guy named Boaz, and she made it into the family tree of Jesus. How did that happen? Because Jews were actually forbidden to marry Moabites. So you'll have to go read Ruth. It's a great book in the Bible, and you'll find out more about that. Okay. The fourth woman in this list is the wife of Uriah. We know her as Bathsheba. Uriah... <coughs> His wife, Bathsheba, is bathing one day, and the king, David, looks down, and he's like, wow. <laughs> and he goes down there, and, it, and it, it's, it's horrific what happens, but right? Terrible story, man. He goes down, and it's not her fault, but man, next thing you know, the king is there with her, and the story just sort of goes south from there. Now, we, we read it from David's standpoint. We don't read it from Bathsheba's standpoint. But I just want to say to you, man, he was the king. This was just plain and simple abuse, all right? And, uh, and it, it didn't, uh, didn't end up well. Bathsheba becomes pregnant. And then the, they kill her husband, Uriah, to cover up this whole scandal, all right? And then David brings a curse upon himself and his whole household. And everybody gets affected by it, especially Bathsheba, you can read that in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Right? This is such a scandalous situation, right? And, and Bathsheba's caught up in the middle of this train wreck. And yet, she's listed in the background of Jesus. And then last on the list, okay, but certainly not the least, is Mary, the mother of Jesus. We read about this in Matthew chapter 1. And she becomes pregnant with Jesus before her wedding. And the child's father is not her fiancé, Joseph. We know this was the first and only virgin birth. It's been claimed by many teenagers, but I'm telling you, this was the only one, all right? <laughs> but the shadow, the shadow of this illegitimate pregnancy would hang over her and her son for all of their lives, okay? This was a scandal, guys. This was a scandal, so you could tell these women were perfectly abnormal. These were real people with real issues, a real mess, real problems. But yet God chose to include them in his story. Now, there's a part of me that takes great comfort in knowing that Jesus would highlight these women, right? Who have a, a background and a history and, and scandal, you know, like my life <laughs> and perhaps like your life. You know, I, I live with some great shame from my past. I've got to tell you that. I have to remind myself, guys, that, that I've been forgiven. That I've got to remind myself that that was something I did. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. And I'm sure these women dealt with shame in their lives. But the truth is they're listed in the genealogy hall of fame. I mean, it doesn't get bigger than being like next to kin with the creator himself, right? So this has been so touching to me, to discover these women and to read their stories. It's just touched my heart. Jesus keeps surprising me. He keeps surprising me. I've, I mean, I've read Matthew hundreds of times. 
and I, had, this hasn't, I haven't noticed this before. I love how Jesus always chose the people that others despised. Those are the ones he spent time with. I've read stories about Jesus hanging out with sinners and with lepers and with thieves. And so what he's telling a story through his life, and he's telling a story about who he spends time with. He's showing us an example of how we should live our lives. I mean, even the guys that he chose to be his disciples, his 12 followers, they were just normal guys. They were just normal people. He could have chosen rabbis and religious leaders and, and politicians or, or governors, but he just chose a bunch of ordinary dudes to follow him and to be his disciples. That's what he did. And so it shouldn't surprise us that he would, he would t highlight these women out of all the moms that he could have mentioned. He highlights these five. Why? But there's more, right? There's two more women who figure prominently in the story of Jesus. And, and it's worth talking about because the, there were two major firsts in Jesus' life that these two women were involved in. Amazing. Just amazing. The first, number one. So, you know, like Jesus lived for 33 years before he was crucified. But it wasn't until he was about 30 years old that he actually started his ministry. And in true Jesus style, his first miracle was turning water into wine, all right? But he was, whenever he did a miracle, he was reluctant for people to say who he was, for people to say, to, to, to acknowledge who he was. He was like, don't tell anybody, be quiet, don't let anyone know, right? That's another thing I love about Jesus, man, he was so humble. I mean, let's be honest, right? If, if I created the stars and, and lightning and thunder and rhinos, you would know all about it, Right? <laughs> But not Jesus. He's like, hey, hey, keep it on the down low. Keep it on the down low. Right? You'd think that the first person who he would reveal his identity to would be some prominent Jewish religious leader. But he's, no, it's not his style, man. In John 4, we've, we've shared the story before about the Samaritan woman from Sychar at Jacob's well. And like Ruth and Rahab and Tamar, she was not even Jewish. And like Tamar and Rahab and Bathsheba, this woman had known numerous men. She had five husbands and, and one other significant other that she was hanging out with, right? And yet in John's gospel, this is the first person that Jesus reveals his true identity to. The first person. Why did he choose her? Why her? A Samaritan at a well. A woman who's been divorced five times. Jesus decides she's the one who's worthy of that first con conversation. That's amazing. I love that about him. Then there's another woman named Mary Magdalene who spent a lot of time with Jesus. And, and the Bible tells us a little about her. First of all, we discover that she had seven demons cast out of her. Seven. We know she was present at the crucifixion of Jesus. We know that she saw where Jesus was buried, and we know that she saw the resurrected Jesus. Now, history, for some reason, paints this woman in a pretty dark picture, a bit of a shady past. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's because she came from the town of Magdala, and prostitution was rife in Magdala. I'm not sure. Or maybe she did have a past. We don't really know, all right? A lot of people have claimed this about her. There's even a ministry in Nashville, Tennessee called the Magdalene Community. And it helps women recovering from lives of drugs and prostitution and abuse. So for some reason, Mary Magdalene wasn't the most respected person. And this makes the grace of Jesus even more beautiful to me. What's most astonishing about Mary Magdalene is she's the first person. Check this out. Hey, the first person. Jesus appeared to after he rose from the dead. <laughs> you would think he would like pop up and say, hey, mom, you know, or Peter or guys, you know, brothers. No, Mary Magdalene, this formerly immoral, formerly demonized person, Jesus says, this is going to be the first person I reveal myself to. So why? <laughs> why Mary Magdalene? Why the woman at the well? Why the unwed mother of uh, Mary of Nazareth, why Bathsheba, Ruth, Rahab, Tamar, why? 
Why did God choose to make these women of ill repute so prominent in the history of Jesus? Why? Listen to this. I believe the reason is that you and I can know that nothing and no one is beyond redemption. We've been singing about it all morning. No one is so messed up and so lost that Jesus cannot rescue us. That's why. All of these women share the same thing, a disgraceful past. Whether they deserved it or not, they each have a shady reputation of some sort. They endured the hatred of others. They felt the pain of some very real shame, right? But God no longer sees them as disgraceful. No, no, no. Now he sees them as grace-filled. No longer disgraceful, but rather grace-filled. God changed their identities. Instead of being women of ill repute, right, he made them ancestors or disciples of the Messiah. And he does that for all of his children. All of his children. God is saying loudly through these women, through their lives, something that is found in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It says this, So then, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. What is old has passed away. Look, what is new has come. And all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Guys, in Jesus, in Christ, the old has passed away. And I'm so grateful for that, I'm telling you. The old has passed away. Jesus takes that old reputation away. It's gone. Your past sin or the abuse and the injustice you've suffered, the ways you've viewed yourself, the way that others have viewed you because of it, it is not who you are. In Jesus, your heavenly Father says, man, you are my child. I have washed you and I've made you holy. You are clean and no one has the authority to say anything otherwise. No one. You are my beloved, he says. And he says, I have removed all of your scarlet letters. Now listen, God has got a million reasons for everything he does, but I believe one great reason that he founded this sorority of women was to remind us of his amazing and unconditional grace to the undeserved and to the unlikely and to the despised. You and I are perfectly abnormal. <laughs> we are the kind of people who Jesus welcomes into his family. It's another way to tell us that he loves to rescue and redeem sinners. And he loves to produce something beautiful out of something horrible. That's what he does. He loves to make foreigners his children. He loves to reconcile his enemies. Romans 8.28 tells us that, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Everything to work together for the good, even for prostitutes, mistresses, and men like me. I don't know where you are in your faith this morning. Well, my guess is, yeah, that, that most of us can relate in some way with these women. We can understand how easy it is to go down the wrong path, right? How easy it is to make mistakes that will define us for the rest of our lives. We can understand how easy it, it is to be, become the victim of abuse or pain or violence. Now, some problems we bring upon ourselves, granted, for sure. But sometimes we're just in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person. I got some good news for you. Today, you're in the right place at the right time with the right person, and his name is Jesus. And don't miss that. 
He associates with people like you and I. He puts us in his family tree. He gave his life for people like you and I. We don't deserve it, but we get it anyway. We get his grace, we get his love, and we get that sacrifice anyway. Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. He was buried, and three days later, he rose from the dead. And he tells us, man, if we will believe this, and we will make him the Lord of our lives, that we will spend eternity with him. Even people like you and me, he will redeem our lives. He throws us a lifeline. He makes us significant. He takes the words shame and guilt out of our vocabulary. And he replaces them with love and acceptance and forgiveness. That's what he does. Now these women may have started off on the wrong path, right? But for each of them, there came a moment when they encountered God's grace. And their path was altered. They repented. Repentance means to turn. They were headed this way, man. Dark road. And we read a little bit about them. They're headed this way, but they repented. They turned. Repent means to turn. And then they went this way. And they started to follow God and follow the Spirit of God and the direction that He had for their lives. Each one of them did that. We're on a path. We might be on a path that leads to destruction. But when we, when we follow the, the acts of the flesh, this is where we're going. But, but man, when we follow the Spirit of God, we go this way. Galatians 5 describes, describes these two paths really well. I want to read this with you. Galatians 5 verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Man, do you just feel the heaviness and the darkness of that? Do you feel that? Do you feel that? He goes on, he says, I warn you. As I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But man, now listen to this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. Do you feel the lightness of that? Do you feel the beauty of that? It says, against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So here we are this morning. Two paths. Two paths. And we have the freedom to choose. Man, you decide. It's up to you. No one forces you to do anything. There are two paths. And my prayer is that you will choose the path that leads you straight to Jesus. He's laid it out for you. It's scary. I know. It is scary. But man, it is worth it. I've been down that path. Trust me. It was fun for a while. But man, then the weight and the shame and the guilt and the hurt. It's too much to bear. But on this path. This provides freedom and peace and forgiveness. No shame. This morning you get to decide. Let's pray together. Father, today we need your help. Some of us are standing at a crossroads, Lord. We know that you have laid a path out for us. So give us the courage and the strength, Lord, to follow you. God, give us the faith to walk this journey with you. 
to stay off the old paths of lies and destruction. And God, create a new path of truth. Renew our minds. Touch our hearts. Guys, as we keep praying with every head bowed and every eye closed, listen, I want you to hear this. There's some of you that perhaps for years you've had the wrong view of God. You thought He's angry at you. He's mad at you. That He could never love you after what you've done. Let me help you replace those lies with truth. Let me tell you about who God is and how He sees you. Our God is a loving Heavenly Father. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. Even if you've done some shameful things, there's nothing that you could do that would make God love you any less. And if you're trying your best to be perfect, listen, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. He simply loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much that He became like you in the person of His Son, Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus was perfect in every way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus is the truth. And if you want to know who God is, just look at Jesus. And Jesus spent most of his time around sinners like you and I. People who have made poor choices. And he loved them. And he gave his life as the perfect gift. The innocent sacrifice. And God raised him from the dead so that all of our sins could be forgiven. That's how much God loves you. No matter what you've done, he loves you. And he wants you to know that love. And yet I know this morning there are some of us who feel distant from God. But today you're creating a new path and it leads directly to God. Man, it's one confession that opens up heaven and gives you access to a relationship with God. It's getting off of that old path, that old sinful path. And we're going to turn towards Jesus and surrender our life to Him. And when you do, God will hear your prayer. He will forgive every sin you've ever committed. And He's going to open up the heavens and He's going to show you His love and you'll be completely new. But listen, hear my words. Hear my words this morning. Listen carefully. And today, if you're in person or you're watching online, you can make Him the Lord of your life right here today. And guys, every eye in this room is closed. Every head is bowed. And you're going to be able to tell Him, man, I want to get off of that old path. I need your love. I need your forgiveness. I want your grace. Today I'm repenting. I'm turning. I'm changing direction. I'm going in a new direction. I'm repenting of my sinfulness. I'm turning towards Jesus. And by faith, I'm giving it all to Him. Now, if you're here this morning and you're like, yes, that's me. I want to do that. I want His forgiveness. Today I want to surrender my life to Him. And that's your prayer. If that's your prayer, I would just ask you to raise your hand right now. All eyes are closed. All eyes are closed. I see a few hands going up. Thank you, guys. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. If you're online, just type in the chat, I'm giving my life to Jesus. Now, church, what I want us to do is that we're going to pray with these, those committing their lives to Christ this morning. We're just going to pray out loud, all of us, all together. Just follow my voice. Here we go. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, save me. Make me brand new. Fill me with your spirit. And fill my mind with truth. So I can follow you. And live for you. My life is not my own. I give it to you. I repent of my sin. And I declare you the Lord of my life. Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, let's hear it. Let's lift it up for those who can be like. Welcome to the family. I want to talk to you. I want to meet with you. So don't leave this place without coming to find me this morning. But listen, if you just gave your life to Jesus, if you just made him the Lord of your life, if you've just repented from the sin in your life, you said, Jesus, you are my Lord then your next step in your faith journey is baptism. It's baptism. And today we're going to have baptisms going on. We've got six people who are already scheduled to be baptized. And my good friend, 
Pastor Marty Young is going to be doing the baptism this morning, and thank you for that, Marty. If you just gave your life to Christ and you want to get baptized this morning, come on now. You're like, dude, I'm in my mom's day best. It's okay. We got some robes, we got t-shirts, we got towels, we got you covered. There's no better way to say, man, I belong to you, Jesus, by doing it publicly in front of all of us through the waters of baptism. And there may be some of you in here who have already given your lives to Christ. You've been following him for a while, but you have not been baptized yet. You have not been immersed. The word baptizo means immersion, underwater. Maybe today's your day. Band is going to do a song right now. And so those of you who have signed up to be baptized, those of you who are giving your life to Christ, and you're like, yes, today's my journey. During this course of the song, I want you to come down. We've got two rooms. We separate the boys and the girls, which is always a good thing. Females will go that side. Males will come that side. And after the song, Pastor Marty will, will do the baptisms for us, okay? Hey. I know we don't deserve it. But he did it for us anyway. What a blessing, right? The band is going to sing a song over you called The Blessing. Those who are ready to be baptized, come on down. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.
your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you may his favor be upon you generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with 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 you he is, with you. He is for you Jesus demonstrated to us what it looks like to be baptized. The creator of the universe, the God who created water, stepped into the waters of the river with John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, and he was baptized, and he showed us the way to do that. At any point during the time of this baptisms, and you of like, man, God has just touched your heart, you ready? You come on down. I'm going to be right here, Okay. We'll hand this over to Pastor Marty. Let's hear it for Pastor Marty. <laughs> for those of you who are, are new at VCC, Pastor Marty uh, was the pastor here for 20 years at VCC, right? And he's here, he's a brother, he's investing in me, he's loving me. We get together once a week, and he's just doing a beautiful, beautiful job of, of mentoring a, a younger guy in this new role, and so we're so grateful that he, uh, he said yes to be doing the baptisms today. So just relax and enjoy, celebrate this beautiful, beautiful moment, okay? Boy, this is fun to coordinate. <laughs> yes, what a, what a treat, and what a blessing for these kids and adults to uh, have brothers and sisters in Christ witnessing this. So. Thank you for being here. If you're family, thank you so much for being a part of a, a very special morning. And uh, I was just, you can't tell them without a lineup card. And I was get, that was all getting changed. So that's, that was part of the delay. So as one gets ready, Tomas, we're going to take you first, buddy. So you want to come on down? Use the rails so you don't fall.
This is Tomas Ibarra. He's part of our Children's Pathfinder program. He's got two very special parents, Joe and Sasha. He's got some cool brothers. And, uh, but he comes this morning uh, for something that is all about him and Jesus. And so, Tomas, I want to let you know I'm excited that you're going to be a part of this. And I'm excited that I get to be the one that does this. So what I'm going to ask you to do, hold my hand, hold my wrist, and you can hold your nose with this, but I'm going to hold this, okay? Tomas, I'm going to want you to repeat after me something that many, many people before you have said to show that they love Jesus and they want him in their life. So I want you to repeat after me, okay? I believe, I believe. that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the Living God. And I take him this morning as the forgiver of my sins and the boss of my life. Based on that sincere confession, Tomas, I have the privilege of baptizing you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in a brand new life. That's exciting. Talon, and then Tristan, okay? Talon, come on down. Use the rail. Am I mistaken, or wasn't your mom baptized on Easter Sunday? Yes, she was. Very cool. And you're following her example, but more than that, you're following the example of dozens and hundreds and thousands and millions of people who Jesus said, I could ask you to do anything. I could ask you to jump off a telephone pole to show that you are following me and obedient said repent confess and be baptized and you come this morning to express that to in the presence of all these people so this is Talon Dahl and Talon you heard me say it to Tomas this is for you though he couldn't say it for you your mom on Easter Sunday could not say it for you you say it now I believe, I believe. that Jesus is the Christ, Christ the son of the living God I take him this morning as my personal Lord and Savior. That's exciting. Thank you for the privilege of now burying you with baptism, with, with Christ in baptism and having you raised to walk in a brand new life. I'm going to stay here with your sister. Okay, I'll be right over there. Right here, just stay right here. Electricity. Okay? But your brother's behind you. Okay? And I know he's done some things behind your back, but this is good today. Okay? <laughs> this is Tristy Dahl, Talon's sister, and it's my privilege to uh, welcome you into the waters of baptism and my privilege to give you the opportunity to say to all these folks, I love Jesus. So I'm going to do the same thing. You can hold my wrist this way. I'll hold this and you can hold your nose when it's talking. Okay, but not yet. <laughs> Tricity, would you repeat after me? I believe, I believe that, Jesus that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And, I today, and I take him today as the forgiver of my sins, of my sins and, the of my life. and the boss of my life. That's a very precious, very personal expression. And as you do it, you also... Declare your faith in Jesus by doing exactly what he said for you to do. To be buried with him in baptism and brought up a brand new life. Boy, that's a brother-sister unusual. This is Callie Smart. She comes from a smart family. <laughs> I love her folks. I love Olivia, her mom, and uh, 
for Dad, Eddie is special in our men's ministry. He's special to this community in a number of ways, too. She's got an incredible brother named Terrell. And together, I'm glad that you found Vernal Christian Church's home. But this morning, more than you being attached to the church, this is an opportunity to say, I want to be attached to Jesus. And because of that, Callie, you are going to be asked to say something that nobody else could say for you. And that is that you want Jesus in your life as your Lord and your Savior. So I'm going to ask you what I've asked the rest of them. But right now, this is just for Callie, okay? I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And I take him today. And I take him today. As the boss of my life. As the boss of my life. And the forgiver, forgiver of my sins. And the forgiver of my sins. Upon that very precious confession of faith. It's my privilege now to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Following Jesus' own example, buried with him, and raised to walk in a brand new life. Thank you, God. Alexander, yeah. yeah, Mikey, and uh, you may have seen him uh, on stage this morning. We try a lot around here to help people belong even before they believe, but Mike very early on began making movement toward his desire to express his belief in Jesus Christ, and I'm grateful for the privilege of being the one that baptized you this morning, buddy. Amen. Your mom, Christina, is here. She's thrilled. Um, yeah, I'll give you a picture. Yeah. yeah. And your brother, Rowan. And uh, so now this morning, because of size, I'm going to move you down a little bit. <laughs> okay? It's almost like baptizing me. That's, uh, so, Mike, upon your sincere confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, I'm going to baptize you. But I want you to declare it this morning. And if you would say it aloud, that that would be testimony. And Jesus said, if, I, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you. So, if you'll just repeat this after me, I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Son of the living God. He's the Son of the living God. And today I take him. Today I take him as the boss of my life. As the boss of my life. And forgive of my sins. And forgive of my sins. This is your testimony this morning. And then I ask you, I'll hold that. I'll hold your nose afterwards. You hold my wrist that way. If I lose you after, I'll find you. <laughs> So, Mike, upon that profession of faith, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Bianca Potter. Bianca is Mikey's uh, girlfriend, at least. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I invited him to stay in the water and just witness uh, a testimony that both of them are making to live for Christ from this day forward. And so, Bianca, I, I haven't known you that long, but it's been a hot, hot mess that some have, some have come out of, but not you. Because you've come today to name Christ as Lord. And so what I'm going to do is ask you to just hold on, and I'm going to hold this, but you can hold your nose. Okay. <laughs> Mike's behind you. <laughs> but the Lord has got a path before you. So this morning, I just want you to say words that would just reflect you're started on this path. I believe, I believe. that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of the living God. He's the Son of the living God. And this morning, I declare him. It's obvious the tears are a part of that, that true profession of faith, and therefore it is truly my, my privilege to baptize you. 
bury you with Christ, but raise you to walk in a brand new life. come to be baptized, and I'm excited about this. Uh, got to greet him early on and, and have watched him just be faithful and uh, marry one of the gals in our church. And Jeremy, you want to come on down, bud? Hold on the rail. This is one of these guys that understands when it's supposed to happen, it's going to happen regardless of whether I brought swim trunks or anything. <laughs> Jeremy stepped out of his row and uh, did your daughter make it back? Yeah. Oh, there she is. And so this morning, I'm excited to baptize you into Jesus. Jeremy Bauerkamper is his name. Jeremy, let's get ourselves ready. Give me that hand and I'll hold it. You can hold your nose if you want. So I'm like this, okay? All right. It's been great watching you come, watching you express personal human love to another like like your wife and uh, now you make a bigger commitment that will affect the love you have for anybody else in your life as you put Jesus first so this is your proclamation before all of these folks you declare before your daughter and before Echo you declare this I believe I believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the Living God. That Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the Living God. And I come today. And I come today. To name Him. To name Him. As my Lord and my Savior. As my Lord and my Savior. It's a privilege for me to baptize a man with a family, with a job, with a with a life to be lived for Jesus, all in His name. And so I baptize you today in, in, with the experience that you will experience his power in doing all those things that he's called you to do. So this morning, I'm burying you with Christ in baptism. And raising you with I thought I was done, and I'm not. That's exciting. Cadence. Oh, honey, you've got the biggest robe on the littlest body. <laughs> Hold on to the rail, really. Oh. And this is Cadence. This is Jeremy's daughter. And Cadence comes this morning at her young age to say, I want the rest of my life to be the best of my life because I'll have Jesus in my life. And so I'm excited to do that. Dad's going to be right behind you. But I'm going to hold you this way for pictures, okay? And I want you to hold my wrist so that you know that I'm not going to let you go, okay? And then you can hold your nose with this one, okay? Cadence, I'm going to ask you to say the same thing everybody else in this water has had to say, but it's for you, okay? And that is you're saying to Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And this morning, I take him as my Lord and my Savior. As sweet as that was. No, you're done. I'm sorry, honey. I just want to say something back at you right now because that was sweet. And that, if nobody was crying before that, they are now. And it's because you have shown in a very childlike way. As Jesus said, all of us are supposed to come. You have shown in a very childlike way that you love the Lord. So I'm baptizing you this morning, just like I baptized Dad, just as I baptized all these others, just as millions have been baptized since Jesus told us to do it. You're being baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, following Christ's own example, and I'm burying you with Christ in baptism and raise you to walk in the brand new life. Give Dad a hug. Wow. 
Wow. All right. Fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for being here this morning. A um, couple of things just want to remind you of. Um, Christianity Explored starts tomorrow night, Monday and Tuesday night, and sign up at our Welcome Center. And then next week, we start in a brand new series. Now, it's called When God Doesn't Make Sense. All right? So, if you're in a spot where you're like, you know what, I just can't figure this out. I don't understand. We're going to dive into that for three weeks. So bring your friends. Bring your friends because this can be a great series for them to learn and, and hear about why God sometimes doesn't make sense, all right, and how we can make sense of the whole thing. We've got a little video I'd like for you to show you just as an in introduction for next week. All right, that starts next week. Come and join us. We love you, moms. Okay, in South Africa, when we uh, celebrate people, we say the word cheers. Can we all cheers the moms in here? One, two, three. Cheers. We love you. Thanks for joining us online. Go in peace. Have a great week. God bless. Oh, hold on, mom. Sorry. Hold on. We have flowers for the moms. Uh, the kids are going to come and hand you a flower. Okay, sorry about that. Do your thing, kids. Thank you.